Okay, drink some coconut water as I do now, you know. I just use regular water to wash with and whatever, you know, do the stuff. But uh, I mean, sometimes I'll drink some water, but usually I'm trying to find coconut water. And I found uh, ones I like best right now that I'm using is uh, coconut water from Vietnam. Coconuts from Vietnam, I guess, means something. Never been to Vietnam. That's a place I should go, I guess. Um, but I got my DNA results, right? And let's see what we got. Uh, well, first, I know this one. I have 71% uh, uh, West African, Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, mainly West Africa, but Sub-Saharan Africa. And 29% uh, 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 European, right? But there's other results here that I got to go to. Oh, ma mainly, my stuff was from... Uh, uh, well, what's that? Well, a little, uh, um, what do you call that? Uh, Senegal. It was Senegal. Um, Ga Ghana. Um, Angola. Uh, well, anyway, it's a bunch of other places like uh, Kenya, uh, Congo Basin, uh, like that. Anyway, uh, I, I I put on another one. You can you can check that out. But here they have they have four other things. They have bitter taste perception, learn your gene. Okay, so I'm gonna do results of bitter taste perception, science of bitter taste, bitter, salty, sour, sweet, and savory. Right, uh, Anthony, you are unlikely to taste certain bitter compounds. Really, I'm unlikely to taste. What does what does this mean? Can you taste it? I can't. What does this mean? What are they telling me? I'm a Beer is bitter too. What we can look for? Marker, whatever. What is the evaluation? Non bitter. The evolution of bitter non tasting. What does this mean? Right, I don't know what this means. Well, you are unlikely to taste certain bitter compounds. You have five tastes. It. Can you taste it? The way you respond to foods often from our genes, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what that means. I have to look that up later. Let's go back, see what the next one is. I don't know what that means, but that's my results. Let me just give you the results. I won't be long with this. Cilantro preference. I don't know what that means either. But let me go view results. Anthony, you have a slightly higher chance of disliking cilantro. Okay. Okay, snow work. Also, uh, type to compound. I got to read that more. Whatever that means. I don't know what that means either. Uh, uh, earwax type. I think I have. They have flaky or sticky. I think I have sticky. Let's see what happens. Anthony, you are likely. You are likely to have wet earwax. Well, that's true. Okay. Uh, what does they say? Sticky. Yeah, I know. I heard. Keeps you warm. Prevent the ear canal and eardrum from drying out. Okay. Helps keep water away from the eardrum. Okay, good. Traps dust, bugs, and other foreign objects. Get the bad stuff out. Earwax unwanted particles inside your ear. Then, then with movement of the jaw, it moves out of the ear canal. Earwax can also protect our ears from bacteria and fungi. These molecules can survive very well in, in the acidic environment of healthy earwax. Oh, cancer survive. Oh. So you have acidic earwax. It's interesting because the way I talk when I do when I articulate. I use my I, I, I um, use my jaw a lot. I mean, I, I move my jaw like some people. American mumble like everybody else like that. But um, but when I'm really articulating, then I really articulate and use my tongue and my ear like that. I was going to produce what uh, happens in ears too. Da -da -da -da. Where it protects your ears. Okay, so there you go. Those are the other things that I have aside from the ancestry things. Oh, lactose intolerance. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm lactose intolerant. Okay. So there you go. It's funny because DNA results. It's funny because I I knew all the, <laughs> I knew everything they're telling me uh, without no tests. I could tell you that traveling, I travel, I travel a lot, travel the world, and I found out everything I need to find out. So there you are. Let me go back to the ancestry thing so I can make make another um, uh, sweep of it. Here you go. A West Africa such as Nigeria, Senegal, Ghana. Okay. 
I think my man that's Senegalese. They call this um, what's the um, Senegambia area? I think that's it. But um, at sixty one percent, Central and East Africa, such as uh, uh, Kenya, Uganda, Congo Basin, Angola, is ten percent. So basically, that coast, that coast there, the Gold Coast. So so basically, that's seventy one percent of West Africa and Central Africa. Europe twenty nine percent. Uh, Northern Europe, such as Ireland, uh, United Kingdom, Germany, France, Scandinavia. I always I choose Ireland. What can I tell you? That's seventy percent. Eastern Europe, such as Poland, whatever, have six percent. Uh, Southwestern Europe, six percent. That's such as Spain, Portugal, parts of France. You know, I like I like I like Spain. well, I don't know about Spain, but uh, Barcelona I like that. I want to get I see, I, need, I need to get to Portugal, but you know, who knows? If I had money, I'd travel much more now. But now. Um, if certain things happen, then I'm definitely going to travel more. I'll just, you know, I don't know. So let's see what happens. Uh, so there it is. Sub-Saharan and, and we are. Oh, okay. All right. That's it. A little information from me, T, from the Pattersons taking the trains to bed, letting you know what I only suspect about my ancestry.